Hello. I need to get one of those machines that's like, wah, wah, wah. that would be really bad. I'll give everyone a second to sort of slowly pop on. I see people pop in. Gabby, hi, how are you? What's going on? We'll just let people sort of come in, say hello to each other, spread some love and goodness. Thank you, Kate. Um, Kimmy, hi, how are you? Um, man, oh, I miss you guys too. I am really missing tour right about now. I have to be honest, I'm pretty, you know, I feel like I do an okay job at being at home all the time because I'm kind of a homebody as it is. Um, I, I really like being home, so... Um, anyways, I am going, today is going to be really, really cool. Um, I've, I hope I don't make a fool out of myself. Aubrey, if you're here and watching already, I'm super excited and also kind of nervous. Um, I want to intro him quickly before I bring him on, um, and just talk to you guys for a little bit, answer a couple questions. Um, so Aubrey Marcus is an incredible New York Times best-selling author, um, and uh, for my favorite and why I know him is through his podcast, the Aubrey Marcus podcast, and I've been listening to it for like well over a year now, and um, yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. It's It gives me the time to sort of like breathe in and breathe out and listen and go, okay, I'm not the only one in this world who who feels crazy or alone or just he creates such a space of, I don't know, making me and other people feel heard and he's not even listening to me. Anyways. Um, so I am, I'm really excited to chat with him. I hope we all get a lot out of it. Um, oh shoot, Aubrey Marcus, he's right there. Okay, I think, so I usually talk to people for a little bit, but I'm just too excited and I want to just bring you on. So I'm going to invite you. Let's do this. See if this works. Uh, uh, uh. Hello. Holy shit. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Oh my gosh. Thanks for hanging out with me. Of course. My pleasure. Absolutely. How are you doing? How are you holding up? Personally, everything is really good. You know, I mean, I think uh, these are challenging times and like in the universal, in the macro, we're all having to reconcile with all different aspects of ourselves, from relationship to the economy to fear about our health to everything else that's going on people that may be impacted but you know on a personal level this is you know I, I write you know similar to you who spends a lot of time at home writing and doing things so right. I do miss those big kind of public outings and I definitely miss giving people hugs I'm gonna hug the shit out of everybody when I get out of here <laughs> but uh but I'm pretty comfortable at home just writing and doing my thing and you know so I'm doing well yeah Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I feel the same. I'm a big hugger, and I'm definitely missing out on the hugs for sure. No Um, doubt. And as a touring musician, you know, at, like, meet and greets, I'm just, like, bring all the fans in and snuggle them all up. And I'm really excited for that moment again after all this. But I think you kind of just spoke to it. Like, I think we're going to appreciate all of that so much more um, because of – what we're going through, you know. You always do. I mean, if you're on a fast and then you go and you have some food, the food tastes amazing. And, you know, I spent time in the darkness. And when I saw the light, the light was amazing. And anything Mm. that you deny yourself, as soon as you deny it, when you get an opportunity to experience it, it's just all that much more pleasurable. Uh, Yeah, perspective. And it's sort of unfortunate. The world's sort of thrown us into it without our, you know, a fast you choose to do it or, you know, the... A deprivation tank, is that what you're talking about? Well, you can go in a sensory deprivation tank, which is shorter. Mm -hmm. I did six full days in the darkness and silence and isolation. 
So after that, that, oh, was, even more, that was even more dramatic. <laughs> but that uh, is so, some sincere dedication. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's good practice for this, which is compared to the darkness and the silence for six days, this is like a circus. You know, I got books, I got people, we're talking right now. You know, I can do all kinds of interesting things that you can't do when you're alone by yourself in the dark. Yeah, wow. That's true. I was going to say, I'm maybe the busiest I've ever been in quarantine, just because I think my managers are like, oh, okay, so we can put you to work and this and this and this and do this <laughs> live and play these songs for this radio station. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Frick, this is really cool. I, I, you might have heard the intro a little bit. I'm obviously a massive fan of yours and think that you have just put out so much positivity and goodness in this world, which we need more of. Um, so yeah, thank you for hanging out. I think um, I have some questions that I'd love to run by. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, All right, absolutely. Cool. So I love your I, rainbow vibes, by the way. Oh, you got it on the fingernails. You yeah. got it on the pants. Crushing it. Yeah, I'm feeling. I mean, it keeps me keeps me happy and light. Good. Um, I've got a green wall, and then over here, I've got a yellow wall. So there's the like <laughs> big hippie '70s gal over here. Uh huh. I like it. Um, I know. I almost was like, maybe I should get dressed and like look like a presentable human for Aubrey Marcus. <laughs> he was like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a couple people do that where you like they'll put on their tux and be like, and now I'm going to the fridge <laughs> to get dinner <laughs> in my yeah. tuxedo, you know? Exactly. I thought this would be more authentic. I like it. I like overall. the vibes. Um, so I'm definitely someone who is really adamant about my routines and my rituals, mm -hmm. um, like in the morning and at night and it kind of keeps me centered. I, everyone who follows me knows I'm in like an avid journal or I do a bunch of journal therapy. Um, so I wanted to know what are your sort of morning, a few of your morning rituals to sort of in this time in particular, has the, has it changed? Is it the same? What's going on? It's really not too dissimilar from what I wrote about in my book. You know, I mean, every morning starts fairly pretty much the same. And the first thing is, you know, that saltwater cocktail, to rehydrate and get the mineral electrolytes of the morning. I do cocktail. it. Beautiful. I read the book. I want you yeah. to know. <laughs> All I right. do the mineral cocktail. All it's right. It's gross, but I do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that gets you rehydrated in the morning and then try to get some movement in. When it's sunny like it is today, it's been raining a bit, but I always go out and get some sunlight on my body. And mm -hmm. that just helps wake me up. And then I'll make my smoothie and then kind of assess the day and um, and take it from there. I mean, there's certain things that are different, obviously, because you have the entirety of the day at your disposal, other than some planned calls or planned lives or things like that. Right. Um, but I, really, every day I try to get some kind of personal growth practice. So whether that's doing my own breath work or doing a meditation or doing um, you know some kind of practice that's going to be helpful to my spiritual body, and then either some journaling or expressive writing or writing poetry, you know, something along those lines to help make sure that I'm tracking my thoughts and providing that some way that I'm giving back. Usually right now it's more digital than anything, you know, finding a way right. to do a live or share some content or create something that's, you know, keeps people's spirits high. Um, but I'm starting to realize like, as this wears on, there's other things that are becoming more available. Like I'm going to be, playing music every day I decided yesterday not that I'm good at music I'm not a musician but like I love just playing my flute and like write a playing song the drum Aubrey. and play yeah and <laughs> nope nobody wants that I'll <laughs> leave that to the professionals but uh you know words are definitely the instrument that I've that I've trained that uh is <laughs> that people will enjoy but um but nonetheless okay. it's just it's nice for me you know to add that and then getting in the in the cold plunge you know doing that every day trying to get Oh, no. Ashley, uh, no. No, no. no okay, so on tour, um, in, I did my first headline tour last fall, and it's when I started your book. And I, because I, I always get sick on tour. It just takes a really massive toll mm -hmm. on your body. And so I started listening to the book and was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over my life. I'm not going to get sick on this headline tour, I swear. And 
did the mineral cocktail in the morning and then I started doing the cold showers. Mm -hmm. Um, and sir, like both bless you (laughs) and fuck you because I hate (laughs) the cold shower. But I mean, it's such a great, um, asset to like keeping your immune system healthy and Mm -hmm. like recharging your body. And I was, I didn't know what I was missing, but I also, I love a hot shower. So no doubt. And every time, you know, it just builds a little bit of that mental resolve because every time you look at that handle, you're like, you sure? Were we doing this today? And then you just got to do it. You know, I call it that mental yeah. override. Just like, just click it. Just, just click do it. it. Make it happen. Just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, and then I'm always that much more proud of myself when I do it because I'm exactly. like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I'm going to do it. And then you do it and you hate it for about three minutes. I think I'm supposed to do it for. And yeah. That- I might do it a little less, um, <laughs> but um, super grateful for that from you because I'm I pretty much swear by it. I I still do it less than I do it on tour. On tour, I'm a little bit more religious right. about it. Right. Um, but I didn't get sick once on tour. Oh yeah, I, I love like, that. Fuck yeah, that's so good. <laughs> you did it. That's yeah. Great. Um, great. So I love your morning stuff. Are you doing similar stuff at night? Are you like winding down are you a glass of wine guy what's your you know i am when i'm with people but like a glass of wine by myself is just not really that appealing to me are you I mean, alone there's been in times your place? where i've thought about it yeah i'm alone in my place okay. so you know and it's not that i won't see some very close friends every now and then and i haven't had a few glasses slash bottles of wine and those in those experiences when i've had a had a friend over but um yeah, I'll find another way to, to kind of unwind and, and whether that's I have a pool, I'll go swim some laps in the pool or I'll go sit in the sauna and read a book or I'll, mm. you know, do something like that. That sounds like the perfect way to just end the day. A sauna yeah, with a good it's book. It's nice. It's nice. I have to use the Kindle, though, because my books would get all wet. But uh, <laughs> so I use the digital books or I'll it doesn't hurt the Kindle. Book. No, they're they're pretty resilient. They're not like phones hmm. that overheat too easily. Hmm. So. That's cool. I I don't have a, a sauna in my apartment. I'm not well, quite somebody there listening yet. may be a sauna dealer and they may send you a sauna after <laughs> hearing this. They might be like, shipping a sauna out to you now. Perfect. Paint it yellow and green and I'm in. Yeah, Just, all the that's colors. Amazing. Rainbow <laughs> sauna delivered to your door. Oh my God. I love that. Oh man. So what about, what about, how are you connecting? Are you doing a bunch of these with friends and family and are you keeping in touch with a lot of people? I know I'm coming into contact myself with like an opportunity to both invest in some relationships. I, I think I should invest in more and then realizing maybe there's some like relationships I should distance yeah. myself from more and this whole thing is sort of opened an opportunity for that are you finding the same thing what kind of relationships are you you know investing more in and what relationships are you distancing yeah from? absolutely i mean i think um the relationships that are the most important that really like fill me up i think you can get really into the habit of just seeing the friends that you're used to seeing you know just mm-hmm. kind of this it's just a habit. It's just a pattern. Like, oh, well, we'll just get together with the crew. You know, like the, the crew is going to go out tonight. Well, the crew is going to go eat dinner. And, and now that that's gone, like you're, I'm being more selective with all the people I know all around the world and just taking the time to talk to them on the phone for half an hour or an hour, however long it is, which is mm. spending a lot more time on the phone. That's for sure. But it's cool because yeah. I think when you can meet up, like especially, I don't know if guys – are a little bit different in this way. I think that's obviously everybody's different, but for me, like with my guy friends, it's usually like, Oh yeah, I'll, I'll catch you in LA next time I'm there. Like we have like two minute conversations. <laughs> yeah. but now we're like getting on the phone and just talking, you know, and just catching up and seeing how we're doing and checking in with each other. And so that's been really cool. It's been cool to see that happening and like getting mm. group Skype calls together um, with the crew. And, uh, and it's, it's been dope for sure. The only thing is the like the jumping on top of each other. We did a like a Zoom um, 
happy hour with my boyfriend's parents. Mm -hmm. And it was super cute. It couldn't have been more adorable of a Zoom hour, but we were constantly like, and then trying yeah. to, and then <laughs> I know everybody is dealing with that. I have, there's gotta be like a tips or secrets to get around that. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there is. And that's honestly one of the reasons why I don't even usually do like virtual podcasts, just because when yeah. you're with somebody, you kind of have a sense when they're about to speak and you know, you just kind of feel it. They get like this kind of feeling like I got Start something wiggling. to say, you know, like, <laughs> it, but on a zoom call, you have no idea. So it's a little bit more challenging for sure. But, um, yeah. but I think we're learning, we're like, we're learning all this technology and we're going to bring, I think so many positives into this next, you know, this next chapter when this whole thing ends. Mm. And um, I'm looking forward to that as well. As hard as it is, I know that there's going to be a lot of positives that are birthed from it. Yeah. I'll say it's taught me to do, I'm, I'm a better listener now with this because it's, you have to fully hear out the person, let them sort of finish their thought before you, you can't jump on people. Like when mm -hmm. you're in, when you're in person in the same room with someone, you can kind of do a little bit of that. Um, so it's, a, it's in a way maybe teaching. I'm just thinking about this right now, conscious going <laughs> wild, but <laughs> um, I think that's been something I'm learning to listen better. Hopefully. That's yeah. Good for me. Um, something else I thought of, and I don't want to keep you too long. I know we've got busy lives and even in the midst of quarantine, but um I was thinking about the fact that I know a lot of people and, and my fans that have been reaching out to me, um, there's, a, there's a real uncomfortableness with being alone and with yourself. Um, and a lot of people don't really know how to, or for a long time, didn't know how to be alone with themselves or right. felt uncomfortable with who they are. <laughs> Um, and I feel like there's an opportunity in this time to sort of like renew the sense of self love for yourself. Cause if you love yourself, it's a lot easier to sit alone with yourself in a room. No doubt. Um, and I wanted to ask you what might be sort of for the people who are at ground zero, don't know how to love themselves yet. You know, what advice might you have for, getting to know themselves and loving themselves. Yeah. Well, I think there's, there's two elements to really practicing self-love. And that's the, that's the important thing is that practice always makes the master. So this idea that you just have this innate sense of self-love and that's just it. And it's, it's there and it's either there or it's not there and whatever, you can't do anything about it. It's, it's false. It's a practice. Mm. And I think the practice has a couple parts. And for those who want to dive deeper, I did a podcast with a guy named Kamal Ravikant. Writing it down. And um, Kamal Ravikant wrote a book, Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. And we talked about that book on the podcast. And um, it's really important to have a self-love practice. And so he has some really basic practices that you can use. And I think one of the first key steps to loving yourself is you have to forgive yourself. You know, so his forgiveness practice is to write down all of the things that you've been holding against yourself. Because we have all kinds of things that we've been holding against ourselves. All these grievances that we hold, all ways that we think that we could have done better or should have done better. And, you know, but the truth mm -hmm. of the matter is that if we could have done better, we would have done better. So when you really look at it, we Ooh. were always doing our best. We really, really were. So wow. the only real logical thing to do there is learn the lesson and then forgive yourself for it. So you write down everything that you forgive yourself for. I forgive myself for that time I got angry in, in that fight with my partner. I forgive myself for that time I wasn't fully honest. I forgive myself for when, you know, I didn't put up a, you know, a healthy boundary and I let someone hurt me. I forgive myself for this or that or not seizing that opportunity or knowing that I wanted to write, but I never did or knowing that I wanted to sing, but I never let myself sing. And you forgive yourself for all of these things that you hold against yourself in the past and you write them all down. And then you look at that list and you go through and you really feel that forgiveness for yourself for everything that you've been holding against yourself. And then you give it up to the fire. You burn it. Like you throw it in the actual fire. Yeah, or just, take it outside and use a lighter or whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. You could also, if you're, if you're near an ocean, 
since it's paper, it's going to be biodegradable and the water is made out of wood. So you can also like wrap it around a rock and throw it in the ocean. But either way, the best way to do it, I think, is a fire. And this is actually an old ancient ritual called the despacho that um, the Andean shamans would practice. And, um, and so you forgive yourself for everything you've been holding against yourself. And you'll have to do that many wow. times because, you know, you know, the funny thing when I've done that, I'll write a list and I'll be like, okay, good. And I'm like, oh, 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 well, we got a few more things. <laughs> I got a few more things out here. I got to forgive myself for. I got a few more things. And you'll never get them all on the first try. And so that's a practice as well. You know, and that practice is just continually, continually forgiving yourself and do it as many times as you need. And then to build the self-love after you've built your forgiveness for yourself, he recommends this really, really simple practice, a way to start. And we can all do that together. Why don't we all do it together? So what we're going to do is we're going to take an inhale. And on the inhale, we're going to do 10 breaths together. We got the time here. We're going to do 10 breaths. And on the inhale, we're going to say to ourselves, or you can just say it out loud or just say it in your head, I love myself. On the inhale. And on the exhale, just breathe out everything that's not love for yourself. Let it go. So that's one. So we're going to do nine more. So on each inhale, I love myself. Each exhale, just breathe out without thinking about anything that's not love. So nine more breaths. We're all going to do it together. All right. Mm -hmm. I love myself. Anything that's not. Feel it leave your body. Feel all of that that's not love leave. Fill yourself with love. And you can imagine it as light that's pouring in through your body as you fill yourself with love. And each time you breathe, more light fills your body. Four more breaths. I love myself. Feel your shoulders drop, feel yourself relax. Maybe a little smile creeps on your face. <laughs> Two more. All right, the last breath. Really love yourself. Feel that light pour in everywhere. And that's the simplest way to just in 10 breaths, practice a little bit of self-love. Whoa, that is good. It's good. That's it's a good, good one. That's good shit, Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wow. I feel like that's something I would love to start including in just my morning ritual. Mm -hmm. You know, a great place to do it too is in the shower. Cause you know, when the cold hits you, you know, you start breathing. So when mm. you're in the cold shower, I always, I'll always do it. When I turn the shower cold, my, all my first big breaths, I love myself. <laughs> I love myself. I love myself because you are actually, you know, in an act of love to your body at that point. And I think there's a difference between right. self-love and self-care. Like, I think a lot of times we think of self-care as like, I'm going to take a bath. I'm going right. to, you know, yeah. do some, that's, it's important to have self-care, but self-love is something different. It comes from the heart. And so combining the act of self-care, which is the shower, which with the act of self-love, which comes from your heart, it's like a double whammy. Whoa. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> this is good. This is really good shit. Oh, I hope everyone is listening so carefully. I'm going to repost this afterwards so people can listen again or maybe do the breath work. Yeah, totally. Watch it back. But mm -hmm. I, I think it's pretty interesting. I think some people assume some people are born with that, like you were saying, born with self-love for themselves. I think you're right. I think it's such a practice. And, mm -hmm. and it's like almost like a muscle. It's like if I don't write a song for a month, that muscle gets really weak. Yep. Um, whereas I think it's the same. Wow. Whoa. Sorry. Yeah. I'm and, pausing because you know, some... this is good. Let's start just in the fact that 
you know, maybe their parents love themselves and, you know, they felt a lot of love from that. And so they had a head start, but nonetheless, we're all going to accumulate grievances. We're going to accumulate things that we're holding against ourselves. So if we don't keep up the practice of both forgiveness and self-love, we'll find ourselves straying no matter what kind of head start that we got, we're going to find ourselves straying. And some people started from a deficit, you know, where their parents really had a lot of self-loathing and they learned that self-loathing and they learned that self-judgment. And so, but either way, the practice is the same. You just keep, keep going with the practice, keep going with the practice and mm -hmm. just make it one of your daily routines. Ooh, so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. This is pretty, in, pretty insane for me. What a total honor. Yeah. Um, I guess the last thing I'd say, you know, before you run off, um, well, A, leaving people with a word of advice. Honestly, you gave them just a, a shit ton. So if you don't have anything else, that's fine. But also where people can find you and listen to you. I've mentioned the Aubrey Marcus podcast. That's what I'm always listening to. Um, but yeah, plug away and we'll call it. Yeah, you can just, just click on my Instagram. You'll see all the stuff. We post clips from the podcast, which is great. It's the Aubrey Marcus podcast. But uh yeah, if you're listening now, just follow on Instagram and that kind of points to everything that I'm doing. It's definitely my most active platform. So um, it's the easiest way to connect with me and you'll get to see kind of the whole scope of everything that I got going on. Obviously, I have a company called Onnit, O-N-N-I-T. So I uh, got a bunch of people still working hard and masked up and gloved up and shipping out a bunch of, of goodies to everybody from protein to supplements to all kinds of healthy things. So you can check that out. And then I guess the last piece of uh, advice I would and last kind of final words would be that, you know, really, we get very focused on all of the things that we're doing externally. But I've found that the most valuable thing that we can always do and the most valuable investment we can make is within ourselves, and to really focus on what's within and being rather than doing. Because once you actually master the art of being, the doing gets really easy and you start attracting the right people and you start creating the right connections. And, you know, this is things just happen, you know, like we all of a sudden got in touch. Why? Well, I don't know. You just caught me being myself on a podcast somewhere, you know, and that created this accord. And then we have a beautiful conversation and this happens. This wasn't like, we're going to do this, you know, it just, <laughs> it just happened, right. you know, and that's the, that's the beautiful part about when you, just focus on on being and that's the greatest gift you can give to everybody else because it gives them permission to be themselves and just be it in the most truthful authentic way we we've all got shit we've all got shadows we've all got dark thoughts nobody's perfect we're all sad we're all happy we're all angry we're all all the things so just allow yourself to be who you are and uh, and really just focus on that whoa wow I'm I'm a dead person. This is pretty cool. <laughs> um, man, yeah, this is well, great. Thank you, thank you so much. This is this has been really special for me, and I um I hope people have just gotten. I hope they get an ounce of as much as I've gotten out of it. It's been really really cool. Yeah, I hope um, so too. And um, hugs sometime when you're on tour. Oh please, yeah. Let yeah. me know. I'll I'll sneak it backstage for sure. <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, so thanks good for to hanging meet you out. And talk with to you. Me. Yeah. All right. See Take you later. Care. Bye bye. Bye. Oh my goodness! If you are still watching, my my whole mind has been blown. Oh my gosh! Yes, hugs party. We will have to have that after all this. Oh, um, I, like I said, I hope you all got as much out of that as I did. Um, what an incredible human being. Um, I've so far really only had, you know, fellow musicians or artists on with me. The first one was with Phineas and I had Quinn and too and all these wonderful people, um, but kind of branching out into having um, just some people that I really respect and look up to, and I just can't believe that just happened. Wow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post this to my Instagram live and might take a couple clips and post them on my actual Instagram. 
timeline. Um, couple things the love yourself like your life depends on it. Um, that book, um, I think it was Kamal. Ooh. Type in love yourself like your life depends on it. I'm sure the author will come up right away. I meant to write it down, but I couldn't figure out how to spell it. Um, I think maybe we should all go read that book now. Maybe there's not a lot better to do in quarantine than learn how to be with yourself and practice not only self-care, but self-love. Oh, jeesh. Okay. Anyways, I'm done. I love you guys so much. Thank you for hanging out with me and with Aubrey. Um, my whole heart feels so full. I'm going to go do some breath work and stuff. Okay. All right. I love you guys so much and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.